Max Johnson had always been proud of his father, Coach Johnson. His dad had been a legendary high school football coach who had led his team to more championships than any other coach in the state's history. Everyone in the town of Millfield had looked up to Coach Johnson as a leader and mentor, and Max had always felt like the luckiest kid in the world to have him as his dad. But that all changed one fateful day when Coach Johnson passed away. Max was devastated. Not only had he lost his beloved father, but the town had lost its greatest coach. Millfield's high school football program had never been the same since Coach Johnson had retired years ago, and the team had not won a championship in nearly 25 years. Max knew what he had to do. He decided to take over his father's legacy by becoming the coach of the high school football team. It was a daunting task, but Max had grown up watching his dad's every move and knew everything there was to know about the game. At first, Max struggled to find players who could bring the team back to its former glory. He went from school to school posting flyers and talking to potential players, but he wasn't having any luck. Most of the kids he talked to had either already committed to other schools or weren't interested in playing football at all. But then one day, Max met a young man named Izzy. Izzy was from the wrong side of town and had a reputation for getting into trouble. But Max saw something in him that no one else did. He saw a God-given talent. Izzy was one of the most naturally gifted athletes Max had ever seen, and he knew that with a little guidance, he could transform Izzy into a star football player. Max took Izzy under his wing and taught him everything he knew about the game. He showed him the proper techniques for throwing and catching passes, the best strategies for running plays, and the right way to motivate his teammates. Before long, Izzy was scoring touchdowns left and right, and the rest of the team was rallying around him. Max had finally found the talent he needed to bring the team back to its former glory. As the season progressed, Max's team began winning game after game. The town's pride in the team grew with every victory, and people started talking about the possibility of the team winning a championship for the first time in decades. But just when things were looking up, tragedy struck again. Izzy was arrested for a crime that he didn't commit. He was sent to jail, and Max was left wondering whether he could continue without the key player who had brought his team so far. Despite the setback, Max refused to give up on his team or on Izzy. He visited Izzy in jail every week, telling him about the team's progress and encouraging him to continue fighting for his freedom. Finally, after weeks of struggling to prove his innocence, Izzy was exonerated and released from jail. He returned to the team with a newfound sense of determination, and he and his teammates surged toward the championship game. On the day of the championship game, the team was ecstatic to see Millfield Stadium filled to the brim with cheering fans. Max and his team played their hearts out, and with Izzy leading the charge, they were able to emerge victorious over their rival team, winning their first championship in 25 years. Max couldn't help but feel a mix of pride, elation, and sadness as he stood on the field with his team, holding the championship trophy aloft. He knew that his dad was watching from above, still proud of his son for carrying on his legacy. Max had turned his mourning into motivation and had brought back the glory days of Millfield football. It was a moment of triumph that he would cherish for the rest of his life. Signing day is here, and so is the first report in our Road to Glory series. As recruits from around the nation declare their intentions for the next four years, we are paying close attention to one recruit in particular. He's the focus of our new series following the life of a student athlete on campus. Our series starts here in Georgia. It's time for us to find out which school will be the campus on our road to glory. He's considered an average wide receiver in most circles and is a middle of the road prospect. Signing day is finally here and he has made his decision. Though he loves home, he feels his best opportunity lies out of state. He found a scholarship offer he couldn't refuse at Clemson University. We now throw it over to Kirk Herbstreet for a look at the impact our student athlete will have at his new school. Thank you, EA. This solid wide receiver has made a great choice in selecting this growing program. He'll have an opportunity to grow with his team. He has a long way to go before he sees significant playing time. This kid's got the speed that you're looking for, but he still has room to improve before I would count him as a big-time player. Like the rest of the college football world, Aaron, we're going to have to see how his career progresses over the next four seasons. If you're not ready to play, Keep your filthy hands off that rock and do not run down that hill. But when you go down that hill and you arrive in Death Valley, you better be ready to bring it. And the Tigers are as we're set to go from Clemson. That's going to do it for us here on the pregame show. NCAA Football 14 action coming at you right now. Fred Nessler and Kirk Herbstreit. 
the first college touch went like this. Just a great effort there. Once he had some space, he was off to the races. They decided, let's go to that Wildcat quarterback. And it went something like this. Two touches, one at wide receiver. I know they're that Wildcat quarterback and you know three rushes, 91 yards, and a touchdown. You know what I mean? This kid is a playmaker. Now this side the red shirt when he first came in, because they were stacked at a lot of positions. Now, red shirt freshman, they decided this kid is an offensive weapon. He don't have no defined one main position. He's gonna be used kind of like a Percy Harvin per se. You know what I mean? So they, they I believe they found a diamond in the rough on this boy easy. Is we end up winning that game 36 to 3. And right here, we taking on Miami. We are down big. They decided let's try to get this kid easy a little bit more touches. And the boy Shipley is down the sideline. Now we are ranked number nine in the country. Like I said, we gonna get this. They gonna try to get this kid, you know, to rock any way they know how. Running back quarterback receiver he's labeled as a offensive weapon and right here that is going to show you this kid is going to be something special now y'all clemson fans y'all know he's not really that big but it did kid is he has speed for days middle of the road recruit like i say the clemson tigers football program has felt a diamond in the rough in this kid three-star athlete coming out of high school they all know his backstory right here we trying to do much as we can you can out the linebacker you just not nobody on this defense in the country is gonna stick with this kid one-on-one -on -one. now right here the quarterback Cade in up punches it in for the touchdown and lucky enough we hit the field goal but we end up losing that game to Miami I mean down goes the number nine team in the country and I say, you really didn't get that much touches rushing the ball. Receiving wise, six receptions, 98 yards, didn't find the end zone. But like I say, does this kid deserve more touches moving forward? Y'all let me know in the comment section. I don't care if he got to be a quarterback, receiver, running back. I don't care. Y'all let me know in the comment section, man. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all the life, man. It's your boy CRE. I'm gone.